What is good guys, Matt from Charlie Gaming here giving you another video and I just drank like a four day old monster Well, almost drank it and I feel a bit weird now So, if I start crying in the video and I somehow forget to edit that out, that is why um, Two videos today, Duality Gaming news and something slightly different which I'll leave to thing uh, Quick thing, obviously as Darius said in his last video and I've said in a few videos I'm moving soon but I will be, hopefully, if I get my act together, be bringing you some great content over the days. Like I'll basically pre-record it and everything, and you'll get to hear my lovely voice and get to hear me shout and everything, and everything in between. But anyway, the news time. Xbox One S, 2TB release date confirmed to the 2nd of August. Basic, uh, well, I'm not going to talk much about this. I'm going to get more my opinion on it and everything. Basically, if you don't know what the Xbox One S is, it's a slim version of of the Xbox One. Uh, there were some weird things going on about it being able to be slightly more powerful but I don't know how true that is. Uh, it was something to do with the whole Gears of War thing. It comes with a 2 terabyte option which I, I'm not sure if the actual Xbox does, I think the Elite has that. And it has been officially confirmed and it will be in places like Australia, Austria, Belgium, Canada, uh, New Zealand, UK, United States. Uh, it'll, as it's already been said, it's going to be released for around $399. I think that's for the 2 terabyte. Don't quote me on that. Uh, release dates for the other two hard drive options are still unknown, but will be re revealed at a later date. I could not see the other hard drives, come, like SKUs, coming much after the Xbox One. Now, that may not have made a lot of good English, and that may not have either. But I don't think they would release them too far apart, because it would make no sense, essentially. Unless they make for go for a cheaper option, wait for the Scorpio and everything. But I cannot see a demand for this console. Because the people that want an Xbox One are going to get an Xbox One, or, or have gotten an Xbox One. And if you've got a PS4, there is unless you really, really have a dying urge to play the exclusives and you haven't already. Because the Xbox One, the bigger one, I believe is actually cheaper now. And so I don't see a point of this, honestly. Uh, I did say when I first saw the Xbox One, maybe if it was slimmer, cool. But with the Scorpio coming out, and I will talk about the Scorpio in the other video, because, well, kind of. Um, I can't see much of a market for this. This seems a bit more niche to me. It seems for people that want to make it more of an entertainment center box thing, rather, because they tried to aim that with the Xbox One, the original one, and it was so fucking big, I don't think it fitted on anyone's fucking entertainment system. It, like, the room I'm moving into it would take about a sixth of the room up. Not actually, but you know what I mean. It was a big console. Anyway, moving on uh, to some... Cheerier, well, che more cheerful news. And just before I start this, the motherfuckers that made these videos for clearly clickbait, like fucking Kid Smooth, sorry for the fucking motorcycle, Crap Gamer, all those probably um next gen 720, all of them for some unknown reason decided to make videos about this subject without actually having any proof. Now this is a rumor, but it's still more proof than they had. And they are literally fanboys that defend a piece of plastic for some unknown reason. I don't know why you would pledge an allegiance to a console, honestly, because it is a piece of plastic. They don't care about you. You buying that doesn't benefit you at all. Well, it does because you get to play games, but none of the money comes to you, so why you defend it is beyond me. Anyway, mini rant over. Rise of the Tomb Raider. PS4 could be coming this October, according to GameStop Italy. Italy is um, a fun country, obviously. Um, this is some Bene news, clearly. Uh, it could be re Tomb Raider could be released on the 11th, of October this year for PS4. It was um, accidentally done by um, GameStop Italy. Now this has been done before in France where they've accidentally done it and it's just a thing that mainland Europe seems to love to do. Uh, the retailer lists the date on both its, its websites in store and release schedule. Neither Square Enix or developer Crystal Dynamics has yet to announce a specific date although the game definitely is launching this year on PS4. Now, that is what I want to talk about. Now, it's not the point of it's releasing. That's good, and the chances are it's going to be at... Actually, I don't even know what the Xbox One version is in terms of resolution, but it'll be probably about 10% more powerful. Um, uh, Square, Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics, I just had a complete brain fart, I'm sorry, did say this was coming out a year later, and lo and behold, the chances are it will come out. It will come out this fall. And it, and it will be. If this is true, October is fall. And these motherfuckers making these videos a couple weeks ago saying, oh, we've not heard anything. Well, let me explain something to you that you clearly don't understand. You may have been doing YouTube longer than... Well, I use that term very lightly because I've been doing YouTube for a long time and just different channels. 
and I don't know much about marketing, but let me just have a little rough guess. Why the fuck would you hype a game that's already out, right? Especially on other consoles. They weren't going to overhype this game. People knew it was coming. People have seen what's going on. They are not going to add much to it. It may have the DLC. It may run at 1080p. It may have two extra frames. But there is no point in release showing out E3. And those motherfuckers are stupid. And this is actually a very plausible date. Because they did say last year. Clearly because these people don't understand. Last year they said it was coming out next fall. Because it was a year long contract of exclusivity. Now this is going... Well, I don't think it's year long. I can't remember how long it was exactly, but 11th of October kind of lines that up. So tell me what you think about that. Uh, I just have a bit of a grudge with those people because they're stupid, and um, I don't know why you'd make videos on something that you had no fucking plausibility on, like you had no evidence. But anyway, that's besides the point. Chance, There's a good chance um, Rise of Tomb Raider PS4 will be coming out on the 11th of October. They may have accidentally leaked the release date in GameStop Italy. Anyway, going on from that. Square Enix president shot by the quality of the PS4 exclusive Spider-Man and surprised by God of War. And to be honest, you can read this article down below. He's, it was all to do with production values, about how good they both looked. And to be fair, I agree with him. On the fact of... And he's not a shy, he's apparently he's a gamer and all that. The Spider-Man on the PS4 surprised me. That game looked very good for a Spider-Man game. Spider-Man games aren't known for being the fucking pinnacle of graphical um, fidelity, especially in the last couple of games they've had. And God of War, well, God of War looked beautiful, and I agree with him. They were surprising, and it's just, I don't know. Tell me what you think about that. It's good to see other developers uh, show, or must have heard, appreciation to other games, especially with Square Enix being such a high production kind of um, company. It shows that, you know, fanboys don't really exist, you know, that kind of shit. But I only wanted to include that just to kind of show that other companies can appreciate other things that aren't theirs. Anyway, he was surprised about that and he mentioned about how they were amazingly shown at E3 and how polished they were. He was shocked by the quality of In Insomniac's PS4 exclusive um, Spider-Man. I wasn't sh The thing is with Insomniac, their games have never looked bad. Every Ratchet and Clank has looked good. I've gone back, or you've seen my series, and I will be getting back to Ratchet and Clank. For its time, it was great. It still stands up now, so, you know, take that as you will. Anyway, going on to the last story for this today. Um, I was going to say raise your hands if you've ever heard of people selling Ultimate Teams or FIFA accounts or even YouTube accounts on eBay and everything. Yeah? Okay. Well, Pokemon Go players are selling their accounts for upwards of $100. This was only a matter of time. I haven't fully read this article because I'm stupid. But um, basically, on sites like eBay, sitting at level 14 were going for $100, while an account listed at level 15 was selling for $175. While there are a few bids on some of the lower priced accounts, including $50 sitting at level 10, Nintentax uh, Labs, the developer behind the game, has explicitly said this is considered cheating. Basically, I found this hilarious because people. Pokemon Go is probably the biggest thing in gaming news right now, and, it, and it, especially if you like to do the news or read the gaming news, you cannot avoid Pokemon Go. It, there are so many good things. There was an article about burglars in Doncaster preventing a burglar because of Pokemon Go. It's making more people go outside. The, fu the fact of the matter is, uh, <laughs> it's become such a uh, polarised kind of subject in terms of that, because Pokemon Go is really good for some things, and it really bad for other things and I find it absolutely hilarious that they are doing some next feat for ultimate team with Pokemon Go and I find it hilarious that people would even spend money to buy Pokemon Go instead of just going outside why the hell would you go buy Pokemon what is the point what are you going to achieve and the, fa the fact of the matter is thank god they say it's cheating but it's a game where you have to walk outside okay you go capture the Pokemon it's the point of the experience why the fuck would you buy it it's a free game. Just go buy more Pokemon balls or something with the fucking money. Instead of fucking going on eBay and buying accounts. How sad do you need to be to do that? It's a free to play game where literally you have to go outside. You don't even have to go outside. I was taking a shit and I caught two fucking Pokemon. I caught a Zubat and a fucking Geodude while having a shit. So why would you spend $175 to get to level 15? If people can get to level 15 in the about a month it's been out, it can't be that hard unless they are extremely well for exercise fit. That's the one I was looking for. So I find this hilarious. 
Uh, it talks about in this article, it's not the first game people have sold accounts and everything or sold anything in terms of games on eBay. FIFA, as I said, YouTube accounts are another one. Um, tell me what you think down below. I find this absolutely hilarious and absolute. Well, well, the fact that you would spend money instead of just going outside is absolutely. I mean, people some some people must not have the um, concept of money. Well, anyway, tell me what you think down below about all the videos. Like the video if you liked it, dislike if you didn't like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel. It really does help me in the research. Check out the Facebook and check out the Instagram for not so daily updates. And ultimately, guys, as I always say, have a nice day.